What you doing? You having catnip? Good morning everybody. It is the end of July and I'm starting out front again. But we didn't have too many projects happen this month other than I did unfortunately say goodbye to the Christmas Limas. Alright guys, it is July 15th and unfortunately as you can see the beans have taken over. Next month would have marked one year that these things were in the ground. They were not supposed to be here this long and we need to get some cucumbers in. So say goodbye to the Christmas Limas. I am going to start removing them. Alright, so I pulled the beans and cleaned up some of the cucumbers, also pulled out a couple of the ones that were just kind of not doing anything, and then put in the second round of cucumbers. Um, okay, so this is probably going to be a fairly quick garden tour. So here we are, these pumpkins looking sad, and unfortunately I think it's the soil out here, it's not the greatest. We got some corn in, this is the glass gem corn that is the popping corn. So hopefully we can get something happening out here. If not, maybe it'll just create some cool fall decorations when they're done. These guys here are the sunflowers. They're not looking too happy. Yet. These sunflowers have yet to open up. You can see their buds here starting. Um, the rest of the plant doesn't look too happy, but the ones on this side, these guys are nice and happy. So not nearly as tall as they should have been, but they're just about coming to the end of their run and unfortunately what was looking really nice in these bins and this guy here is starting to die back we don't know what to do about this area it does get sun and these do get watered and so the baskets like we've tried many different options out here we've even gone with desert native plants and things and even with potted mix there's something going on out here. All right, so let's head to the back and see what's going on over there. So our bins are looking a bit sad. Uh, I think it's because it could be the heat. It's not the watering issues. We've been pretty diligent about getting the water out here. I should say Sarah has been. We do have some shade cloth up on some things. It's just, it's a tricky time for us here. Usually July and August are actually difficult times for us to grow. Seems like July and August are like the two months that are like our worst growing months even though we get harvests but the weather itself is not like ideal. Things in these wine barrels seem to be okay. This is new so this got planted up with some leftover corn, a Connecticut field pumpkin and this guy over here is a strawberry crown. The strawberry crown is a slow mover and we got a couple melons here that we're doing pretty good and then now somehow kind of got stunted and the vine's not growing. Over here, the beans are putting off fairly well and there goes the little princess. But <laughs> the beans are starting to climb. They're doing their thing. They're doing pretty good. They're flowering. And the, what are these? Geraniums. Oh, the geraniums. They're those putting on their necks because those didn't have flowers last. Ivy geraniums, this is their, their bloom season. That was their bloom season. So ivy geraniums are coming up and the lemon balm that was cut back is now flushing up again. A couple potted new pots. Pincushion flower and a salvia. And then the lime looks like it put on a little bit of growth. Okay, whoa. And look at the artichoke coming back. Nice and strong. The white borage is purple, <laughs> but that's okay. The bees will like the purple. Anyway, that weird foamy stuff has now moved off of the lavender and onto the, what looks like the rosemary. Uh, we need to deal with some weeding over here in this corner. Here, these are the, these were really tiny last month, but they put on a quite a bit of growth and now have little tomatoes on them. Determinant patio tomatoes, I think they're Tiny Tim's and Tommy Toes. And if you can see in the background and notice what's missing. So the eggplant's gone, 
so are the cucumbers. And then way back there, there is only one of the uh, kale left, and I believe this one's going to come out soon too, because you'll once I swing around, you'll see that the melons on this side were not doing all that great, and we suspected they were getting too much shade or nutrients being sucked up from what was next to it, which was the kale. So here, let's just do a quick thing. I don't know why I call it the ring of fire. This ring here. Well, what are you pointing to? That bed's going to be garlic and onions. This one here? Yes. Garlic in the, in the fall when it gets shipped to us. And right now, I have onions that are ready to go in. So garlic and onion will be this bed once it's amended. And we have some usable compost from that first round that will be able to go in here. But uh, here's these, these melons. Last season, I remember that the watermelons took quite a while to get going over the cantaloupe. I don't know if it's because of the issues of it having not enough nutrient, not enough light, or if it's just a slow goer. Needless to say, it doesn't matter. Sarah yanked out the kale, and this one's gonna come out too. And the things that she's planning on putting in here, the onions and the garlic, are low, so shouldn't have any issues with blockage of any kind of light. Your stevia is looking lovely, and you've been making some teas, oh, the yeah, herbal, um, sun tea. herbal sun teas that she's been brewing with the clippings of different things from the garden. So. Stevia, holy basil, and lavender. Different herbs from the garden sitting in a mason jar in the sun. Really nice over ice. Okay, so look at these melons. They're coming in. Get my hand under here. They're not going to get too much bigger than this. Oddly, these are both the same type of melon, yes? But they grow differently. This happened last year too where we had a couple where one melon looks slightly different than the other, where it doesn't have that lace work. They're midget cantaloupe, so they won't get much bigger than what this guy is right here. And they're going to start ripening off, so I need to get my little cages that I built onto them so that the rodents who want to come and eat our ripening fruit can't get to them. And they're just these little cage boxes, which I actually have not done a tutorial on. I guess I could do that. Okay, let's take a look at this corn. This corn has gone crazy in a month because these were tiny little plants last time you guys saw them. And then all what's growing through it is that strawberry crown. And then we have the cucumbers over here. The sugar pumpkin, now that the beans are gone, are um, starting to grow. So we got a pumpkin coming on. And we have some beans here. So these are new beans. These are berlotti, climbing berlottis. The peppers, which are putting off quite a bit of peppers, but we're having a bit of a problem with them. They got yeah. sun scald, and I've been shading them. This round of them is already damaged. If it gets more flowers and puts on more fruit, then those will be okay because I've started shading them. Um, okay, so this was the regular zucchini that got moved away from the other. It was initially tucked in into that back area over there, but as you can see, the Long Island pumpkin has gone nuts and started to take over as it does. So we had to move this zucchini out from over there so that the pumpkin could have room to kind of go. So this got put here. This is just temporary. It will probably find a new home, but look at that. So this was the regular, your typical green zucchini. And I'm gonna come on over here so we can take a look at the craziness that is definitely a butternut squash. This is still just one plant, one vine that actually has all of the, the butternuts on it. There is multiple vines in here, but the one that actually is growing the majority of the butternuts because it went in first is all on that first initial vine. And then the other ones are starting, but they're a little bit smaller. Yeah, there's like three. There's one on this side, yeah. So the two new plants are, are do have some, but not as much as what that first vine was. So. I'm excited. I'm happy to have butternut. Okay, so some stuff got pulled out over here as well. This bed will be cleared in the next couple of days. So the chard and the beets are coming out and the cabbage. The cabbage. Isn't that sorrel? The sorrel is a perennial. It just needs a trim back and it'll flush again. I replanted a lovage and a parsley in this shaded area and the mint in a pot. I'm going to have another mint there and then I'm actually going to scatter some flower seeds on this bed and just let it be flowers for the next few months. It looks like 
the lemon is putting off some flowers again, even though it still has some green fruit on it. But so lemon begin. trees, apparently lemon trees here can be in both fruit and bloom at the same time. All right, so, and then this is the cori squash. So there's two cori squash growing. get some egg corn squash to see if I can get in here without damaging. I've been feeding the egg corn squash but I think it's, it's competing. The Long Island is sucking up all the nutrients because this egg corn is really small. Oh there's like weird looking ones at the top though. Those look yeah, different. I, I think they might be cross pollinating. It's a little messy looking and hard to decipher because of the growth of this pumpkin which I'm actually surprised happened this soon. I thought that this major growth of this pumpkin wouldn't like really take off until next month. It got a little more crowded sooner than expected. What we did last year at the end of the season is we just let the pumpkin kind of take over and it was the only thing left. Yeah, so that's what's going on back here. Not too much more to say. What are you doing? Oh, oh, <laughs> bye bye. The rhubarb is very happy. It's still not quite pinkening up in there, but eventually it will be, hopefully soon. They're getting large. A couple of them started dying. Okay, Bubba, well, you need attention. A couple of them started dying off before they ripened. Anyhow, that's that. And then over here, where I pulled out that Christmas lima, they are now all cucumbers doing their thing. All pickling cucumbers. All pickling cucumbers. The volunteer tomato has been removed, but the holy basil is happy. It's the holy basil that Tara was making the tea from. My hair is a bit scruffy right now. This is a bee balm that takes a while to establish itself. And there's some flowers. There's sunflowers. This thing's taking its sweet time Straw to strong flower to like been forever that it's trying to bloom. These are on their last. Leg. That's the thing with squash is they produce and then they get sickly and you really just need to let them go. Pull them and at this point I can put in new squash. They are still producing some stuff but they are like they quite are a bit of aphid. Really bad aphid infestation. I've treated for it. Our area is like oddly damp in the mornings and not damp to like the soil is damp but the plants get damp and so that like wreaks havoc between pottery mildew and pests that want to be here. And if you're trying to stay organic, there's not too many treating options other than washing the plants down, which increase the dampness. Neem, but neem can be quite harsh, particularly because of, of the intensity of the sun. So that's that. And the ones back here that went in as the second round are doing okay. They're they're coming, they're along. coming along. But um, all right, let's take a look at the end of the run for these tomatoes. Yeah, these will ripen up and this whole row will get old and this area will be amended. You're thinking of some brassicas though, right? Yes, Maybe. It's some type of a brassica, I just don't know. What these were the stuffers. We actually had some recently. That you use them just like stuffed peppers and you can stuff them with, with anything. Could be meat, could be, you know, a vegetarian right. grain mix. And then these are romas. I actually have pictures of the tomatoes when they were ripe that I'll put up so you can see them. These are pretty large. This is vintage wine. Uh, no, that's a brandy wine. Oh, brandy wine. It's the only brandy wine somehow that survived and it's taking its time. Wow, this is a decent okay. size. I can't say I'm surprised with this area. This was the same problem last year that these plants grew and they produce, but they also get diseased very easily. So, I mean, so did the ones in the cage. So, so the, yeah, that's the. Um, I had some extra plants that I stuck in here. A golden nugget in the middle and another San Marzano on the edge. The San Marzano is actually doing quite well, putting, still putting on fruit. They're not gonna last too much longer either. I threw in a couple of African blue basil because they have lovely flowers that the pollinators enjoy. And I figured I needed to cover the surface of this bed. It's a cat attraction. So I'm trying to cover the soil. Is somehow. this an ornamental basil or is it edible? I believe it's edible, but it, mostly pe people just use it for the flower though. Oh, one quick thing. I forgot to say that the strawberries are very happy. We don't have the right environment for the tower to work because it's, it's, not, it's too dry here. The strawberries are now happy now that they are in the ground and you can 
sort of see them through the cage. I forgot to remove the cage today, but that's okay. There's not much happening in here other than some new plants that were put in. And there are a couple replacement plants that are waiting to be put into this area. So there will be more tomatoes put in. It looks kind of sad now, but that's okay. We'll have a second round. They're larger tomatoes. There's mortgage lifter and some things that produce larger fruits. Okay. So that's basically it today. I'm just gonna do the quick breeze around. I'm gonna throw up some pictures of the harvest that we've had throughout the month so you guys can take a look at that before we sign off here. And that is all I have for you today. If you have not done so already, please like, share, and subscribe, and we hope to see you soon.